beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed now, the Lord began to talk to me about the thing that he would want to do in this place tonight. And our Bible study will be around two words. It's going to be pure Bible study. I'll do less of talking. We're going to open our Bibles because I want us to get revelation and get an understanding. Hallelujah. The difference between a herbalist and a servant of God. Please look up. Among the many differences, one of the clear differences between a herbalist and a servant of God is that a herbalist performs magic and ministers simply deliver the word by the leadership of the spirit and the Holy Ghost confirms his word with signs following. Are you following please? So we're not just some magicians coming to do abracatabra and then heal the sick and set men free. No, we believe in Jesus Christ. He is Lord in this place. Hallelujah. And we believe that nothing can be done outside of God's word and that it is on account of God's word that his anointing flows to bless people. Praise God. So we are not just gift conscious. We are conscious of the word of God. Out of the revelation of God's word, we can dispense our gifts. Then you will understand that it is a product of the word. The Bible says, and the Lord walking with them, confirming the word, not their faces, not their voices, confirming the word. So everything that will happen tonight to the glory of God will be a confirmation. Hallelujah. So please make sure you participate because as I teach, the Lord told me that as I teach, several miracles and breakthroughs will begin to happen to people. So I want you to believe and to connect. Say amen. amen. Now, two words we'll be discussing tonight. One is called limitation. Please write limitation. limitation and the other word is breakthrough all that god will be doing tonight will be centered around this limitation and breakthrough hallelujah praise god now a limitation uh, this is a dictionary definition we're doing bible study so there's no rema we're going straight and making sure it enters your spirit a limitation is a restriction an undue restriction when we say a man is limited we mean you are restricted you are confined there a, a limitation means a setback a limitation means a disadvantage a flaw a weakness an obstruction hallelujah so when we say a man is limited he lacks the capacity to move to the fullness of his potentials or the will of God for his life. As a result of regardless of what the factors are. It's called a limitation. Do you understand? 
so when we say a man is limited we mean the man is incapacitated the man is there is a setback there is a factor that is impeding your advancement and your progress limiting you stopping you from making the necessary steps say amen please let me have two people here any two people hallelujah now Aaron you stand there let's call Aaron destiny please Ruben stand in the middle let me have one more person thank you pastor Alpha please just stand facing me now try to stop me from moving everybody watch this now I'm trying to move what do we call this a resistance are you following me now this is called a limitation this is my divine destiny this is my prophetic destiny as far as the word of God is concerned but what happens in the journey you face what a limitation are you listening to me now regardless of why it came is not the issue it is still called a limitation are you following me now and so this is what a resistance and it has the danger about a limitation is it possesses the capacity to stop you from reaching your divine destiny are you listening to me for as long as this limitation stands before me although there is a place that has been prepared in destiny there is a seat of glory there is a seat of honor i am unable to access are you listening to me praise god now let me show you another dimension of limitation please don't tear my suit but just gently hold it <laughs> hallelujah praise god now try to ah this is risky <laughs> hold Aaron <own> shirt <laughs> praise god now please don't tear his shirt i don't know if the welfare department has made arrangement for any <laughs> praise god now watch this try to pull him back aaron come this is your divine destiny what do we call this a limitation are you following me now please this is what a setback this guy wants to move forward he desires to move forward because there is a divine destiny aaron concentrate i'm using you to teach <laughs> hallelujah there is a divine say, say after me divine destiny according to god's word now this guy wants to make progress but what happens there are factors limiting him and as long as those factors are not dealt with what happens to his destiny his destiny will be aborted and do you realize that the destiny of every man on the earth is time tagged meaning you do not have all the time are, are you understanding me so what is a limitation it's a resistance what is a limitation an obstacle what is a limitation a setback a flaw a disadvantage whatever has the capacity to impede you hallelujah and stop you from entering that dimension that prophetic dimension for you now there is a journey listen to me from the promise to the manifestation of that promise are you listening to me now a lot of people think when you find truth in god's word it automatically happens people say i find it i believe it that settles it that's not true we've taught here again that that does not settle it there are principles please are you following me because if you are here desiring a miracle and we believe that god is able to bring that miracle then it means that we must be able to find out what spiritual principles he has created to address the limitations are you following me are you blessed do you understand do you understand god bless you please appreciate them the next thing i'm talking about is breakthrough what is breakthrough you hear people say breakthrough spiritual breakthrough academic breakthrough we have posters of meetings and they say come healing deliverance breakthrough what does it mean to break through it comes from two words break hallelujah it's not called open through it's called what breakthrough praise the lord what is a breakthrough a breakthrough is a significant and dramatic overcoming of a perceived obstacle significant take note of the words and 
what dramatic a significant and dramatic overcoming that's why we started with that scripture it says whatsoever is born of god possesses in itself the capacity to overcome the world and this is that victory that overcomes even our faith are you following tonight so a breakthrough is what There are two kinds of soils or three kinds of soils taught in scripture good word falls in different kinds of soils there are certain soils that receive the word and forget immediately and the enemy come and he steals his some fall on rocky grounds in the name of jesus we declare that every soil in this place is a good soil in the name of jesus nothing was wrong with the word but the soil and even among the good soil there were three kinds 30 fold 60 fold and 100 fold i pray that we have 100 fold returning soils here yeah. hallelujah so a breakthrough is what a significant and dramatic overcoming of a perceived obstacle remember we said a limitation is an obstacle so we can say breakthrough is when you overcome limitations are you following me now thus allowing the completion of a process that means that limitations and all these things come to impede a process you are in a process to achieve something and then what happens there is a limitation through whatever mechanism you use by the time you overpower those limitations so that you are able to continue your journey or attain on to the thing that made you to start that journey we say you have broken through I pray that the Lord will cause someone to break through in a dramatic way tonight. Yeah. Hallelujah. Like John Fah rightly said, there are not many people. I know that God has helped a lot of people in the area of healing and the rest. But there are several areas of our lives where we have faced limitations of all sorts. And tonight by the anointing of God's spirit, there will be a breaking forth a breaking through the bible says in isaiah 54 it says you will break forth on the left and on the right on the north on the east hallelujah praise the lord three things that cause limitations in the lives of people or really four but one is an exception number one please this is a bible study make sure you're writing media people help our online members so that they follow three things that cause limitations number one ignorance 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 of god's plan ignorance of god's word ignorance of god's principles say after me ignorance not just ignorance ignorance of god's word ignorance of his principles ignorance of his ways hallelujah mark chapter 12 verse 24 please turn your bible let's hurry up now arise O oh lord come to your resting place you and the ark of your might and then we will rejoice as we're crowned in your righteousness we celebrate your love verse 24 are you there mark 12 24 and jesus answering said unto them do ye not therefore err why because ye know not the scripture neither the power of god so why do people err because they know not he said you err the word err there does not just mean mistake hallelujah you fall you don't get results because you do not know the scriptures nor the power of god there are so many believers who love God but are ignorant of God's plan, ignorance of God's ways. 
and listen to me let me stop by to say something we are in trouble if we only train a church that is built upon signs and wonders are you listening to me you know that we believe in signs and wonders very soon many of you will be shocked at what god will do in this place but let me tell you the truth the bible says he showed his ways to moses but his acts to the nation of israel remember we discussed last week praise god and so it's not enough to know that god is a miracle worker it's not enough to know that god can bless that god can lift that overnight god can turn anybody's situation that's not potent enough we must be able to understand his principles how do you live from point a to point b are you following me now if you understand kingdom principles you can reproduce results again and again and again hallelujah praise the lord dr steve for instance is a great lecturer in the faculty of arts and he has been there for so long only God knows how many projects he has had to, I mean, sign out for students and how many people. Why? Because he has a principle. Hallelujah. And that principle can bring a hundred level student from hundred level and do what? Graduate that student. Are you following me now? If you are in English, for instance, you will find out that since the eighties, there have been people graduating from English. Is that correct? And by the time you know what they know, they will give you a degree. Are you following me now? Principles make life predictable. Principles make life predictable. Principles are the sign that God is just and he's fair unto all men. Are you following me, please? So ignorance in the word of God. Psalm 82 verse 5. The Bible says they know not, neither do they understand. And so they grope in darkness. What is darkness? Absence of light. Absence of illumination. The Bible says through wisdom, a house is built. And by understanding it is established. It says through knowledge, the, the rooms are filled with every treasurable thing. Hallelujah ignorance is a terrible thing and there are so many believers that equate knowledge to longevity of christian work it's not the same that a man has been born again 10 years does not mean the person has knowledge of the kingdom of god are you listening to me there are yarrow boys who have been walking around samaru and around the university environment for decades does that make them students they know when students go on break they know when students resume they know when there is strike but are they students so that you are hanging around the kingdom are you listening to me coming to church sharing the grace sitting down does not mean you are growing hallelujah it is the degree of the word of god that you have heard you have believed that's why you see the bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing it's not enough to just come once and say wow i got it how many of you have gone to read for students and you are so sure that you have gotten something and then two weeks later you forget you solve the question and now you cannot even remember what you did because it takes more than once repetition is a powerful principle so when you keep listening to the word of god what happens there is a programming of your mindset there is forget about the temporary setbacks there is a programming of your mindset he says meditate on these things give yourself wholly to them that your profiting may appear unto all first timothy chapter 4 verse 15 meditate on these things pour yourself in them give yourself wholly to them that your profiting maybe not immediately but certainly will appear unto all say my profiting will appear unto all say it like you mean it my profiting will appear unto all hallelujah there are many people who the limitations that they have to face right now in the church we blame satan for everything everything especially with the era of prophets who are always seeing something about somebody's life 
There are all kinds. And many people, because of the inability to take responsibility over their lives, we have mastered the art of transferring responsibilities to people. And so we just say, it's because there is one woman in my village. Those who it is true and those who is not true, they all say, I know there is somebody. Praise the Lord. Knowledge is a great asset in the kingdom. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. The prophet lamenting said, my people perish. The first shock is God calls them my people. So that you are his people. It's not a guarantee that you will prosper. My people, although they are my people, they perish. Why? For lack of knowledge. The knowledge of God's ways. Hallelujah. That's why the moment, listen to me, let me tell you something. The ministry that will help you become strong is the ministry that will take out time to teach you the word. Are you listening? That's why we take three weeks to teach the word to sit in God's atmosphere. We are not always laying hands on people and ministering. If we do that way, you will find the gifts of the Holy Spirit manifesting in your life, but you will not grow into maturity. hallelujah jesus raised the apostles by teaching them day and night they were under his teaching the bible says they continued in the doctrines of the apostles breaking bread from house to house they continued not that they started and left off are you following me now so coming for meetings is not just a ritual you are exposing yourself to the power of god's word again and again you are learning principles that are capable he said i commend you to the word of his grace that is able to make you wise and then to give you to deliver unto you an inheritance among them that are sanctified i commend you to god and to the word of his grace that has the capacity to make you wise and the bible says wisdom is the principal thing therefore get wisdom and with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her and she shall promote you. She will put an ornament of glory, a crown of glory. Shall she deliver upon your head when thou dost embrace her. Hallelujah. Ignorance is a terrible thing. What area of your life have you been experiencing ignorance? I'm not just talking in the word like Bible or ministry. In your life, in your work, in your job, there are lots of people that celebrate ignorance. And in this part of the world, we do not value knowledge at all. We like results. We don't like the process. That's why people like church and they have put pressure on men of God to deliver results without a process. So people say, look, the the end is the end does what justifies the means that's not true it matters how the result comes because a day will come when you will have to reproduce that result by yourself without any assistance and jesus told them he said i'm about to go i've taught you many things and they said no jesus you can't go he said don't worry the comforter will come and continue hallelujah Say, I reject ignorance in my life. There are lots of people that, that cannot invest in knowledge. The Bible says, buy the truth, sell it not. I tell you, ignorance is a terrible thing. In ministry, in every area of your life. There are many people who are poor in their jobs and keep shouting and say, we are not promoted. But they are not good. They are not competent hallelujah there are so many christians that come and say prophet pray for me this contract is coming i want to get the truth is they are not good you give them roads they are not going to build it well and let me tell you something the fact that you bear a christian name does not mean god will break his principles because of you are you following me consistently refuse to be satisfied with the level that you are 
the greatest enemy of success is the last one you had the bible says forgetting the things that are behind i press forgetting the successes and the achievements i press how many of you have a desire let me tell you something there are many there are subtle realms of knowledge that can render satan powerless in your life are you following me now praise the lord say i receive grace for knowledge let's continue number two disobedience to god and his ways causes of limitations disobedience to god and his ways joshua chapter 5 verse 6 joshua chapter 5 verse 6 thank you jesus we hail you most high joshua chapter 5 verse 6 are you there let me read it for the children of israel walked 40 years in the wilderness till all the people who were men of war who came out of egypt were consumed because what they obeyed not the voice of the lord the god of the lord unto whom the lord swore that he would not show them the land which the lord swore unto their fathers that he would give us the land that floweth with milk and honey listen to me let me tell you something the the price of disobedience is not worth it or the consequences there are many people and many families that are disobeying the principles of god yet they want to be blessed yet they want god to increase them hallelujah when you are involved in bribery and corruption and giving tips and then you believe that god will bless you it can't work that way when you are involved as a student in malpractice and you say it does not matter i'm a new creation in christ hallelujah i'm telling you here that satan is not sovereign are you listening to me we have promoted satan and made him sovereign satan needs an access point to create limitations and this is one of it ignorance number two disobedience disobedience jeremiah chapter 9 jeremiah chapter 9 from verse 13 for many of us this is our miracle already starting jeremiah chapter 9 it's not just about saying oh let's pray or receive no 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 jeremiah chapter 9 if you are there say amen. amen verse 13 and the lord said because they have forsaken my law which i set before them and have not obeyed my voice neither walked in it but have walked after the imagination of their own heart and after balim which their fathers taught them therefore thus saith the lord of hosts the god of israel behold i will feed them even these people with warm wood and give them water of god to drink is that in your bible there are severe consequences there are many people there are many ministries there are many homes for instance who are perpetually under a close heaven financially and in other in, in other sense and you trace the sincere truth is that most of them before we even talk about satan we are going to come to the issue of satan but you see that there are other principles we just turn everything and say it's satan no satan is not omniscient satan is not omnipresent satan is not omnipotent he is not sovereign hallelujah 
That means he is limited. Hallelujah. The Bible talks about our tithing as what opens the, the windows of heaven. I emphasize this all the time. If you're not a faithful tither, I tell you, even if they make you the president of this country, you will be poor. I assure you, scriptures cannot be broken. This has nothing to do with age. This has nothing to do with gender. This has nothing to do with qualification. It says, bring ye all the tithes, Malachi chapter 3 from verse 8 to 12, into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And the Bible says, prove, prove me now, here which said the Lord, if I will not open the windows of heaven and shower upon you a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. The next verse says, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. He shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast its young before its time. He said you will be blessed and you shall be a delightsome land. Seven prophetic blessings that follow it either. You either obey it and reap the blessings or argue it and explain it away. Hallelujah. Luke 6 38 the Bible says give and it shall be given unto you good measure pressed down shaken together running over shall men give Philippians 4 19 and my God many of us say my God shall supply my needs no that was a blessing from a receiver speaking to those who had been given and my God Paul speaking shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus Bible says he that soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly he that soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully many of us have been massaged with all kinds of demonic teachings the size of your seed doesn't matter don't you understand English the Bible says he that soweth sparingly shall reap what sparingly he that sows bountifully shall reap bountifully it says every man according as he has purpose in his heart so let him give cheerfully and not grudgingly for god loves a cheerful giver next verse and god is able to make all grace abound towards you so that ye having all sufficiency in all things may abound unto good works all good works hallelujah Bible says there is he that scattered and increased there is he that withholded more than his meat and tends to poverty are you following me so this is not an issue of guesswork many of us are waiting in hope that one day in the sweet by and by god will just come anyhow and change my story i assure you if you don't take steps towards your destiny you will be surprised are you getting blessed tonight Oh, I'm great. Yes, but the Bible says that see it thou a man diligent. Are you diligent in training your skills? Training the, the grace and the gifts that God has given you? You believe you are going to be an international writer. What are you doing about it? The Bible says iron sharpeneth iron. It said by the truth. When you live by the principles of God's word is one way of moving away from limitation. Disobedience. Hallelujah. Many believers walk in so much disobedience and they give Satan access. For instance, the Bible says, What fellowship has righteousness got to do with lawlessness? And what communion has light got to do with darkness? There are many of our families, and I will not be surprised, some of us who mix Christianity with African tradition. Are you following me? When things get so bad, everybody said, Talk. They say come back home just come back home this issue is is too much and now what happens everybody goes let me tell you jesus christ is either lord of all or he's not are you listening to me there are many of us that when things get bad we just say see keep this issue of christianity aside 
my uncle did this they said we should do this they said we should bribe this we should do that let me tell you something you cannot violate god's principle and expect his blessing are you learning something because god is already doing miracles in our lives number three satan and demonic forces the causes of limitations satan now this is where we'll talk about satan let me assure you brothers and sisters that satan is on a mission that he will never stop till jesus comes and that mission is to ensure you do not become a success in life are you listening to me you don't need to do anything you just need to be born that's all you just need to be born jesus is born and the next thing satan the spirit of the antichrist begins to move through herod and what happens he begins to search for where jesus is he was a baby hallelujah and so many of us say satan i won't trouble you don't trouble me and i hear a lot of people teach they say you go to the enemy's camp and steer the waters that's why that's not true that's not true jesus went too fast satan followed him is that true he followed him waited for him to finish fasting at the 40th day he came let me show you something first thessalonians 2 verse 18 we are doing a bible study first thessalonians 2 verse 18 this is the real miracle service the miracle of listening to the word first thessalonians 2 verse 18 for time's sake i'll start reading this was paul speaking wherefore we would have come unto you even i paul once and again but satan did what hindered us is it in your bible let's read together if you are there one to read verse 18 wherefore we would have come unto you even i paul once and again but what happened who hindered them what were they doing did they look for his trouble he said but satan hindered us there are many families many lives many destinies i tell you the truth and they have been hindered by satan hallelujah and the danger is that many families are not open to accept that they need help there are many believers that need help but they will never humble themselves in the mighty presence of god i am a pastor i am a this i am a that in our church we believe glory things are working you are dying and satan hindered us we wanted to come to you but satan built a limitation and a resistance can i tell you something satan does attack people matthew chapter 13 verse 27 and 28 thank you lord jesus if you're following me say hallelujah if you're learning something say praise the lord matthew 13 are you there let's hurry up verse 27 this was the parable of the wheat and the tears let's read on 27 so the servants of the householder came and said unto him sir did not thou sow good seed in thy field from where then had it had it tears 28 he said unto them what he said unto them what an enemy had done this an enemy many of you have blamed yourself for everything could it be that the sincere efforts of your parents and your family members are being impeded by satanic and all kinds of demonic things see that's why the bible says, judge not judge not 
don't just sit down and conclude things about families and look and say lazy man the man doesn't go to job mm -mm. the bible says judge not hallelujah there are many families here that are under all kinds of satanic attack and it's because of the prophetic destinies of those families or those individuals john 10 10 said the thief cometh not but what still to kill and to destroy brothers and sisters satan attacks people i have seen demons in the spirit being sent on assignments before you think he's just men of god everybody has a share of it satan is desperate it's just that he's more desperate about some people than others because affecting others will cause others to fall are you listening to me these are the three major causes major causes of limitation in the life of believers the fourth is an exceptional one but then i must i want you to note it why is it exceptional i put it in a, a different category god's dealing and prophetic timing god's dealing and prophetic timing in a man's life there are times that god himself will put limitations because certain prophetic seasons have not come luke 1 verse 80 the bible speaking about john the baptist it says and john remained the word remained there means he was constrained in the wilderness until his season of appearance are you following me now so john was there he would want to manifest but god will hold him back and say no there is a time i'm teaching you this so that you can discern when it, you are walking in god's timing and god's prophetic dealing in your life and when it is an attack from satan you're my glory the lifter up of my hand job 14 verse 14 job made an interesting statement he said all the days of my appointed time will i wait until my change comes why will job make that statement appointed some scriptures say ordained time he said thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion for the time to favor her yea the set time hmm. this teaching will make you matured in the spirit are you following me now so there is an appointed time so you can see a man in ministry and he has not expanded based on your definition but it's not satan stopping him he's digging root downwards and the remnant of the house of jacob shall bear root downwards are you listening to me you can see a lady who god has called into ministry and all of these things and maybe certain things have not yet happened in her life are you following me now but there is a waiting until the appointed time so not every limitation just comes from satan as we follow up i will help you to see hebrews chapter 5 verse 8 let's see something that happened to even jesus christ himself hebrews 5 thank you jesus are you getting blessed tonight Hebrews 5 verse 8 it starts with a very shocking statement you know see I tell you I love the word of God because sometimes the way it presents itself it just reads your mind and writes it there listen he said though he were a son though he were a son he said yet he learned obedience by the things which he what look up look up did jesus live a sinless life did jesus live a sinless life of course he did of course he did the bible says he was tempted in every way just like us yet without sin so 
what is the Bible saying here? That though he were a son, yet he learned obedience. In other words, there were certain processes that were required to make Jesus who he is. There were certain orchestrations of the spirit. Like his birth. Like different things. And the Bible says he learned, the word learned obedience there is that he was constrained to come into a life of obedience through the things he suffered. It's not just that he studied, learned. No. I know you know about the interplay of Greek and Hebrew words. Sometimes the words, the synonyms that are used there. The word learned there does not just mean he studied. You don't study obedience. Obe real obedience is a product of experiences. Are you listening to me? He learned obedience by the things that he suffered. Thank you, Jesus. For instance, he had to wait for 30 years before he got into a ministry of three and a half years. By at age 12, he was already he was already shocking the doctors of that time. Many of us would have just jumped and said, wow, at this level, what happened? I mean, but he waited. Moses, listen to me. The timings of God in the life of a man is very important. I was talking to someone today and then I was talking to him a lot about timing. Where God has brought us today, all the ministers by the grace of God, I tell you the truth, it's not just impartation and receive there are certain things we are able to counsel people today because some of us have become guinea pigs to the revelation god wants us to minister to people and paul said death works in us that life will work in you are you following me now oftentimes in scripture god will make the prophet to marry a prostitute because he wanted them to feel the harlotry of the nation of israel and will make a prophet to sleep on one side of the bed for one year and walk naked for two years what kind of madness is that and then when he has the burden upon his heart he will send him i know this is not a very nice message but for great people this is a great message we don't deceive people in this place we bring the unadulterated truth of god's word are you following me now The Bible says when Jesus was born because of a limitation Herod got up and wanted to kill Jesus what happened the angel told Jesus he said look although this is his prophetic destiny he will have to wait for a while until Herod dies are you following me now that seemed to be a delay I, I mean he has an agenda he just has 33 years but he said because Herod wants to kill him can I tell you something the fact that God told, said they should run away with Jesus meant he could die. If they disobeyed, they would have killed Jesus. I assure you. God will not ask Herod to, I mean Joseph, to run away with the child if he could not die. They would have killed him. And he would have aborted the plan of destiny. Are you following me now? Because he laid aside his divine life and was human. So the prophetic timings of God. Because I understand there are many ministries that put pressure on people. After six months, they say you need to show that your faith is working. Till now you are not buying any suit. You are an embarrassment to the kingdom. Till now you are not doing this. Why, why, why are you driving a beetle till now? You are supposed to get a jeep. No, no. There is a process. Are you listening to me? You sow your seed today and you say, God, my harvest must come. Mm -mm. If the cloud be full of rain, they will empty themselves. Your job is to keep obeying. Your act of faith here is that you have not seen the result, but you count him faithful. And so you keep obeying. I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him. Do you believe this about your life? <laughs> Can I tell you one shocking truth many people will not tell you? every word you claim to believe will be tried in your lifetime i assure you hmm. are you listening
listening to me Micah 7 verse 8 rejoice not over me my enemies he said for I will rise that's why you can see certain families because they are trusting God they didn't promote the father they didn't promote the mother and many people just look and say these people is good for them no the day they will bounce into glory for God is able to take a man from a dunghill if you if you would have seen us years ago when we were trying to go for a crusade we were raising the the transport money while people were boarding the car in main gate is that true but we counted him faithful let me tell you something we were not laughing those times those were times of tears she there are two kinds of sowing there's the one you give cheerfully there is the one you give in tears are you listening to me that's the one that will touch you he said they that sow in tears the kind of sacrifice that you ask yourself am i a fool he said they will reap in joy he said he that weepeth holding his precious seeds tilling the ground and crying but saying lord i count you faithful you are crying but you are saying i won't sleep with any man i'm sowing a seed of a glorious destiny you are crying and saying, if he meets me selling akara i will walk in the dignity of god's word i won't give anybody bribe and tips i won't do any malpractice no matter how many years i will stay for if you turn aside in the day of battle my bible tells me your strength is small there are many believers who are just sugar-coated christians result-oriented christians and we are unable to stand the test of time are you are you listening to something tonight if this is all we do tonight is what the miracle service hallelujah so don't be under pressure many people are under pressure to prove that the word of god is working you have money you want to go and buy suit god will say sow it just sow it you want to go and eat food god will say buy a dick's bible and you are sowing in fastings in prayers nobody see you but he who sees you in the secret i tell you as surely as the heavens are above the earth will reward you openly when we were on campus we had a, all kinds of pastors all kinds of people and there were people who believed they had entered their rest with pas and all kinds of things we were behind behind trees behind buildings traveling in the spirit and learning the precepts of god we will do terrible things in righteousness and come back and just remain i remember how many times a number of pastors came and met me and said adel some geos are not working in your level of anointing do something start a radio program a prophetic or this and that to the point that pfn when we went for crusade pfn said they are affording us an auditorium to come and start a branch of our ministry this was as far back as 2006 and would have been happy to call it breakthrough but we understand that certain limitations are not just from satan they are prophetic orchestrations to keep us exactly into our seasons all the days of my appointed time I will wait oh i will wait until my change comes and then god begins to bless you and people say well, and when the lord turned again the captivity of zion we were like them that dream he said then our mouths were filled with laughter then said they among the hidden the lord has done great things to them he said turn again our captivity as it were the rivers of negev he said he that sows in tears will reap in joy listen to me don't be ashamed to sow in tears for as surely as the lord the god of heaven lives you will reap in joy i'm not just talking of money are you listening to me you think god has called you now it's not the time to start printing posters and running around now is the time to get up and begin to buy books sit down in fastings in prayers in much traveling until you become mighty in scripture and full of the holy ghost then at your time of appointment god will speak this is my beloved son 
in whom i am well pleased and he will command the world to hear you nobody will not be able to hear you mm. i have to rush what do you need to be in place to experience breakthroughs remember we said breakthrough is the breaking of limitations number one you must surrender totally to jesus notice i didn't say you must i'm not just talking of born again hallelujah because there are many people who jesus has become savior to but he is not yet lord total surrender acts chapter 4 verse 12 but there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must receive soteria healing salvation deliverance breakthrough no other name not the name of any pastor any apostle any prophet they are only vessels but there is a name the name of the lord jesus christ and tonight we come in that name to challenge the works of darkness the bible says for this purpose was the son of man made manifest that he may destroy annihilate liquidate the works of the evil one hallelujah surrender totally matthew chapter 11 verse 28 i'm taking our time to show us these scriptures because i want us to be grounded and to receive the things that god has for us matthew 11 verse 28 come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest i tell you there are many people who are struggling with things in their lives and the solution is to live your way of life and come to jesus christ this is not just luring you to be a christian jesus said i am the way i am reality and i am the life so tonight i believe that god is speaking to some people here inside and outside you came here with burdens and sorrows you have tried and you've you've done everything to, you know to do the lord is asking you tonight why don't you lay your burden why don't you come to his feet and lay your burden and say lord enough is enough there are families that are receiving all kinds of burdens they are not supposed to be carrying surrender totally to jesus christ hallelujah see because you cannot bless a man who the word of god is against are you listening to me you are not born again the word of god is already against you because the bible says he who does not believe in him is already condemned hallelujah you don't believe the word of god and you're saying all this i want to receive from god but me i don't want to become a child of god no it doesn't work that way hallelujah number two you must go for knowledge and understanding of the kingdom living through god's word i didn't say knowledge and understanding just of scriptures you must have the knowledge and the understanding of the kingdom life how god designed for us to live in the kingdom to live the victorious life john chapter 11 verse 9 and 10 john chapter 11 thank you jesus the lord shows me the angels of the lord in this place i prayed specifically i listened to prophet bob jones a great prophet of god and he said a day came he was caught up in the spirit and he met an angel and the name of that angel is breakthrough and the angel told him that he was the one who walked with archbishop ben idahosa he didn't know idahosa from anywhere he told him there was a nigerian called archbishop ben idahosa god sent him to be the one to walk i said lord would you send these angels of breakthrough tonight because you gave me a word and the lord told me he would do it and so i believe that the, the I've, I've never really had encounters with breakthrough angels i've had encounters with angels but not breakthrough angels but i know that these visions that the lord keeps playing again and again is a sign that the waters are about to stay be stirred blessed is she that believes for unto her there shall be a performance let's finish up john 11 verse 9 and 10 
Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in night, in the night, he stumbleth because there is no light in him. He didn't say because his eyes is not seen. There is no light in him. He said the entrance of thy word giveth light and understanding to the simple. It's time to go for knowledge. Revelation knowledge. Not just religion and tradition. Content for it. Brothers and sisters, please listen to me. Knowledge is not a gift. It's acquired. You go for knowledge. John 8, 32. I must show you these scriptures before we rise up. Because God will do great things tonight in this place. And ye shall know the truth. John 8, 32. And the truth shall do what? He didn't say, and a man of God shall make you free. He didn't say, and a miracle service shall make you free. Are you listening to me? And ye shall know the truth. And the truth that you know is capable of making you. It didn't say, set you free. It may not happen in one day. Make you free. There is a making that is unto freedom. And ye shall know the truth. And the activity of that truth in your spirit will bring you to a realm of freedom. And ye shall know the truth. Go for knowledge. Value knowledge. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 15. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. The presence of God. There is a switch in anointings in this place. Thank you. Ah, Elohim, Elohim Madonna. Ah, Elohim. The labor of the fool wearied every one of them because he knoweth not how to go into the city. He said, The labor of the fool wearied him, not because there is no city. He does not know how to go to the city. So you must find out how to go to the city. The labor of the fool weary at him. Because he does not know how to go to the city. May the Lord show us the way to the city. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Number three. Obedience to God's principles. The keys that will bring breakthrough. Number one is total surrender to Jesus. Number two is knowledge and understanding of the kingdom life. Through the word of God. Three, obedience to God's principles. And I wrote here, at all cost. Because many of us only obey according to the convenience it brings. The Bible says Jesus was obedient unto death. Philippians 2 from verse 5. Permit this mind to be in you which was so also in Christ Jesus who although being in equality with God did not consider it robbery but he humbled himself and became obedient unto death and he died even the death on the cross wherefore God so highly exalted him and given him an identity a reputation an office a name that is above every other name that are the mention that whenever you invoke and place a demand upon that office of the Christ every knee will bow of things in heaven of things in the earth and tonight some knees will bow in your life oh. some knees will bow hallelujah obedience Isaiah 1 verse 19 popular scripture Although many of you don't know it because you don't care about it. If ye be willing, it starts by saying, If, if, it's up to you. If ye be willing and obedient, what will happen? Ye shall eat the good of the land. Can I tell you, every land has good? It's not just in Abuja and Lagos. When the devil wants to kill some people 
he gives them visa to London, America, China. Because they believe there are people sleeping under the bridge in America. There are Nigerians sweeping the road and sleeping under the bridge in UK. There are, I was reading a, a newspaper about a path that people follow to go to London through Lagos. They follow through deserts and die on the way. Ask them what they are looking for. They say greener pastures. But my Bible tells me, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He, the Lord, makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside the quiet waters he restores my soul he guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake the bible says yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies satan does not need to be absent before you get blessed he said you anoint my head with oil and my cup runneth over Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 and 2 and it shall come to pass in that day if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to observe and to do all his commands which I command you this day that the Lord will set you on high above all nations verse 2 and these blessings shall come upon you and will overtake you if you will obey the blessings of obedience are priceless these blessings will come upon you and they will overtake you. Say, I receive grace to be obedient. At all costs, I receive grace. Obedience in walking in the principles of God, obedience in tithing, obedience in giving, obedience in declaring God's word, obedience in standing firm, having done all to stand, stand. Number four. And this is our job tonight. Exercise dominion over Satan and demons. Exercise dominion. Take action. Do something about them. Through the ministry of prayer and the operation of the anointing. Make sure you are writing it the way I'm saying it. Through the ministry. Listen. You don't just exercise authority over Satan just by speaking. Elijah was a man of like passions like us, the Bible says. And the Bible says he went and he prayed that there be no rain for three and a half years. It was on account of that prayer he went and he made a decree. True decree is born out of the place of prayer. You don't just stand and say be healed. Go, be free. I speak to your life. No, sir. The sons of Sceva did not know the secret of Paul. He said, I thank my God. I pray in tongues more than ye all. And they saw the man who was possessed of demons. Because their father was a priest. The Bible does not tell us what kind of priest. And they adjured the demon in the God that Paul preaches. And the demon beats them and strips them off. You exercise dominion in the place of prayer. And through the ministry of the anointing. You dislodge Satan. Mark 1 27. The Bible says while Jesus was teaching like I'm doing. The power of God was present. The power of God. The anointing. The unction for performance. The ability of God that backs his word and makes it potent. As Jesus was teaching. Just like I'm teaching. And miracles are already taking place. Shiftings. Alignments. That close the door. That have been opened for Satan to find access in lives and families. As Jesus taught. Matthew 8, 16. After a prayer you speak, you declare. The Bible says he casted the devils with his word. He didn't cast them with his wish. He didn't cast them with his dream. He didn't cast them with his choruses. He casted them with his word. Listen, the Bible did not say he casted them with his speaking. He casted them with his word. It's not your speaking that drives devils. It's the word of God. That's why you can just lay hands on a demon. Even without speaking. Because you have been so full of the word that you are becoming the word. 
So when you lay hands, what heals the person is the word. The manifestation of the word. The goal of taking in the word is that you become a manifestation of the word yourself. Not just that you know the word. That you become full of the word. And then you become an expression of the word. Such that you can look at the devil and just point at him. Even without speaking, the word is commanding him. Hallelujah. Luke 10 verse 17 to 19. We must read this. Before we rise up to pray. Don't worry. The time we have is more than enough for God to do a quick work. It doesn't take long when the word has entered your spirit. Luke 10 verse 17. After he sent the 70. Verse 17. And the 70 returned again with joy saying, Lord, please listen. Get this once and for all. Even the demons are what? Subject to us. Say the demons are subject to me. Please shout it. Say demons are subject to me. Demons are subject to me. You must believe this. All kinds of demons. Do you know at this time, the believers, the apostles were not even born again. I hope you know. Jesus just sent them in his name. And they came back and said, wow. Even the demons. This is the basis of casting out devils. And liberating people. You cannot deliver someone who is above you. Are you listening to me? Even the demons are subject to us. Not because we are called ourselves. Through thy name. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. And listen. Verse 18. And he said unto them. Jesus speaking now. I beheld Satan fall as what? Lightning. Say after me Satan is falling. Oh say it again. Satan is falling. There's a song we used to sing. I have seen, seen. I know many of you didn't sing it. Glory be to God. Glory be to Jesus. I have seen, seen the downfall of Satan. Glory be to God. Amen. We didn't have the revelation. We're just singing it. But now I know truly that it's not a lie. Like Jesus Christ, I have seen, seen. The downfall of Satan. Glory be to God. Glory be to Jesus. I have seen, seen the downfall of Satan. Glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe that song with all my heart. Right now, it's not just the tunes of songs or the, the genre that moves me. I'm interested in the revelation. My faith is hearing, I have seen. I have seen. I don't just get entertained by songs. I have seen. He said, I beheld Satan and I saw him fall. The Bible says judgment was declared upon him in heaven. Listen. Tonight we are not trying to fight Satan. Our job is to stand in the victory and enforce it. Because although God has put all things under his feet, we do not yet see all things but we see jesus and we come in the name of that jesus and we legislate on behalf of heaven say amen, amen. now listen out of everything i have taught you the first three we cannot do it for you this is the only one that we can do for you tonight we can be born again for you are you listening to me we cannot get knowledge for you we cannot we cannot do what what's the third one we cannot be obedient for you but such as we have tonight oh there is an agency of the spirit we can command the devil we can stand and agree with you i won't begin to poison you with satanic messages oh have faith you left your home and you came here that's enough faith brother Many people died in that accident. You have faith right here and you will receive it. Are you listening to me? You left the road that some people, some of you traveled from different places. I assure you that's enough faith. Faith can be seen. 
when jesus saw their faith they were tearing the roof many of you walked from wherever you are to come here tonight that's faith blessed be the name of the lord luke 5 verse 7 jesus walked in the anointing in a very powerful way now please be sensitive because we're going to stand up as soon as we stand up we'll move straight into the business of the night what god would want to do mm. 17 luke 5 17 and it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by those who were come out of galilee and judea and jerusalem and the what and the what so there is an operation of the anointing and the power of god jeremiah 30 verse 8 oh do you hear what i hear in the spirit jeremiah 30 verse 8 what the lord will be doing tonight by his spirit for there is no other name for there is no other name Thank you, Jesus. Jeremiah 30, verse 8. For it shall come to pass. Say amen. amen. Oh, tonight it will come to pass. It shall come to pass. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck. Do you believe this? And it shall come to pass, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck, and I will burst thy bonds. And strangers, aliens, demons are aliens, they are strangers, they are not supposed to live in this realm. And the Bible says, Those strangers shall no more oppress you. Yes, that's the word of God. He said, It shall come to pass. The Bible gives them a name, it calls them aliens. They are strangers. They are illegal occupants of your body. Illegal occupants of your finances. Illegal occupants of your academics. Of your life. He said it shall come to pass. Those strangers will not enslave you. Why will all this happen? The last scripture. Isaiah 10 verse 27. That is why this will be possible. 10 27. Hmm. And it shall come to pass in that day that the burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke he didn't say your yoke his yoke satan's yoke because jesus said my yoke is easy and my burden is light it is time for the new anointing guard up your loins and be ready Every yoke of bondage shall be destroyed. I prophesy, now is the time for the new anointing. Gird up your loins and be ready for every yoke of bondage. Surely must be broken. I'll sing it one more time now is the time for the new anointing cut up your loins and be ready for every yoke of bondage surely must be broken family bondages whatever it is now is the time there is a new anointing Please gird up your faith and be ready for every yoke of bondage, every yoke of bondage, every yoke of sickness, every yoke of failure, every yoke of bondage surely must be broken every yoke of bondage surely must be broken this is what he told me every yoke of bondage 
Surely must be broken. It shall come to pass that the burden, that undue limitation of marriage. Listen, let me tell you something. There are not many. The focus of God tonight is not just healings. There are some radical breakthroughs that need to step in for some people. Are you listening to me? For your family, for yourself. This is why I took out time to teach. Breakthrough. He said, and then your light shall break forth as the morning. Eastern shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us. After tonight's meeting, distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us. Distant shores and the islands will see your light. I'd like you to believe. Sing it with me. Hey, distant shores and the islands will see your light. One more time. Distant shores and the islands will see prayer point number one lord i surrender totally go ahead and begin to pray they have the word just like we did lord i surrender totally Let's say and not have any excuse to keep me in poverty, to keep me in bondage. Because as long as you are not surrendered, I tell you, Satan has legal access to your life, to your family. Make sure you are praying. <laughs> And say, Lord, I decree, please pray for your family. Lord, enough is enough. I surrender everything. I surrender everything. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. You are going to pray and say, Lord, I receive deliverance from laziness, mental laziness, to go for knowledge. To study the word to take God's word seriously there are many of us that need to pray say Lord I've not been taking your word seriously but tonight lift your voice in this miracle service I vow and I make a commitment your word over my finances your word over my health your word over my authority Lord, I don't just want to receive from you. I take your word seriously. I believe it. I develop passion for your house. Passion for your word. 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 You are not a man that you should lie. You are not the son of man that you should repent. I believe, I believe, I believe. I go for knowledge. I go for knowledge. I buy books. I listen to tapes. I sit under the anointing for my life to change. My mind, deliverance of my mind, a reprogramming, a reprogramming, a reprogramming by the power of the word, by the agents of the Holy Ghost, a reprogramming of my mind. Hallelujah. Knowledge reprograms your mind. It reprograms your mind brings you to a realm 
where you are not walking in antagonism when you walk in that realm i tell you no matter what satan brings you will emerge victorious your mind has been changed do not be conformed to this world but be it transformed prayer point number three that spirit that walks in the sons of disobedience that makes them disobey god's word although you know what the word says difficult in walking in obedience i receive grace to obey lift your voice and pray grace in tithing in giving in praise in worship in love in character satan will not have room in my life grace to obey grace to pray make sure you are praying the bible says pray without ceasing the bible says let the word of christ dwell in you lord i'm an obedient christian obedience unto death no matter what it will cost me no matter what it will cost me the temporary pain the temporary pleasure the temporary tears i saw in tears i obey i saw in tears i obey i saw in tears i obey i obey god is faithful god is faithful god is faithful i meditate on these things i give myself holy to them my profit in appears unto all make sure you're praying kapata kapala Mam praste kapate kete rakata pakata. Make sure you're not looking at others. You came for a miracle service. Arabara gada 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 bosh. Do I have some prayer warriors in the house? Do I have some prayer warriors in the house? You people are not praying like victorious people. Do I have some prayer warriors? Men of destiny, those who know their God, who will be strong and do exploits. Hallelujah. 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 Now listen. Within the next five minutes, hear me. I want you to pray your life out in this last prayer request. Are you listening to me? The final prayer point. You're going to say, Lord. In this place, I'm walking out of that problem. Whether it's a limitation for your family. Are you listening to me? Lift your voice and pray. Come on, travel. Pray like a priest. Say, Lord, others came for joke, but I did not come to joke. I came to take my blessing. I came to take breakthrough. I came to take power. Back up, take her. I came to take energy. You can open a door. You can make a way. I believe you. Yes, you can make a way. My God, you can make a way. You are not a man. You will not lie. You are not a man. You will not lie. Barakete, reketete, repokoto. Pray for your job. Pray for your finance. Pray for your health. That terminal disease. Enough is enough. That terminal disease, that blood disease, enough is enough. That habit, that habit, that masturbation, that lesbianism, that sexual lifestyle, enough is enough. That hatred, that bitterness, those nightmares, demons oppressing you, enough is enough. The devourer over your family, enough is enough pray everybody in your family is falling sick enough is enough stand on the gap no 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 
like Jacob, I hold on to you tonight. I will not let you go. My God, I count you faithful. I will not let you go until you bless me. Change my name. Change my story. 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 Hallelujah. Take up fire. Change our name. Change the stories of families. They call your family failures. They say nothing good can come out of you. Lord, change our story. Is it turn again our captivity, oh God? Like the streams of the Negev. They say your family, they don't give birth. In your family, they don't get married. In your family, nobody gets a job. Nobody can build a house that your father cannot build. There is a God. I bring you news tonight. There is a God. His name is Jesus. He has been lifted. You have been submitting CVs again and again. No job. You have prayed. You have fasted. You are a minister. No growth in your church. We are praying, oh. We are praying. We are praying. Lord, change my father's story. Change my mother's story. Change the story of my family. You are God. You have done it in the past. You have done it in the past. You have done it in the past. Hallelujah. 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 I tell you, my spirit is mad right now. Tonight, some things will change. Some things must change this night. Oppression in your dreams. You don't tell anybody. You are a Christian. But you can't sleep. You can't sleep. Enough is enough. Terminal disease. You know how many times you escape that. Enough is enough. Come on. You have been writing jam. You are brilliant. But you enter the exam hall. You don't know what is happening. Your CGPA is down. Not because you are dull. You know you are not dull. You know you are not dull. Enough is enough. We are still praying. One more minute. One more minute. Change our story. Let the nations know that our God is alive. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting my head. When I cry, thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. My head. Listen. The Lord wants to set families free right now. This one is not for individuals. But because you represent families, many of you may not know the hand of Satan in your family. But enough is enough. There is an anointing. Please lift your hands. Pataka, patakata. Oh, we mean business tonight. Oh, we mean business tonight. As I begin to pray, listen. The power of God will come on certain people. Know you are representing your family. Your family, whether it's barrenness, joblessness. My God and my King, whose I am, 
right now let the power of God break yokes break yokes break yokes in the name of Jesus now 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 break the yokes but take it inside and outside I release the power of God bring them out take it receive the fire the fire the fire of the Holy Ghost I release the fire bring them out bring them out ushers barrenness I cause it everything that speaks against you I cause it tonight Makapate, reke posa, mapari case, oko proskepa, reke te, outside, the power of God is touching people, outside, setting families free. Kata kata bala, pati kata, we set the works of darkness on fire, over families, of our lives the devil is a liar by the fire power of the Holy Ghost and he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire every kind of cause no divination no enchantment against Jacob the power of God is hitting you. I tell you, the power of God is touching families. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. The angels of the Lord moving in the crowd. Moving in the crowd. The angels of the Lord. The angels of the Lord. The angels of the Lord. The of the Lord moving. My father. For your name's sake, my father. Patakata balada baka. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, that cause of barrenness. But take it in. The enemy has done this. Hallelujah. Haya. I tell you things are happening in this place. There is fire in this place. No. Too hot for any devil. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. I release the anointing. The yoke breaking anointing. Listen to me. Listen to me. Hallelujah. Tonight, tonight, God is coming in as a warrior in many families. Are you listening to me? See, God told me families. Families have suffered. Families have suffered. Satan, that devil over these families. Go, 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 go,
my boat so pretty. Every devil, every devil, by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Go, go, go. Let God's people go free. Go, go, go. Hallelujah. Breakthrough. Breakthrough. Breakthrough is when you break that obstacle by the anointing. You shatter walls. That man will know your God is alive. Tonight, don't give excuses. Don't give excuses. Get angry. Say, Lord, you are touching families. You won't pass me this night, oh. You won't pass me this night. Hallelujah. Hold on. I see all kinds of oppression over this lady's family. Satan, come out. Go. In the name of Jesus. Bring this lady. Let her family go now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Let her family go. Go. I set your family free. Right now. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. Delay in marriage. All kinds of demonic things. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Listen. Listen. Ha. You, will, you will go back and know you came for a miracle service. You have prayed. You have heard the word. God will not fail you. Listen to me. Listen. Now, hear me. I want to pray for people. Listen. You know that you have any challenge over your mind and your brain. You are not dull. You know it. See, tonight, there's no hiding anything. We are a family. Don't sit back there and watch Satan wreck your life. Because I'm seeing someone, listen. Every time you want to read, a severe headache comes upon you. You can't explain until you close that book for all those that belong in this category lift your hands because some things will end right now i want to pray oh there are angels in the name that is above every other name many of you will literally feel something being pulled off your head literally at the count of three that's the instruction the Holy Ghost gives me one two three shake it touch 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 that chain of bondage over your mind go ahead and declare I am free Declare it. Declare it. Declare it. I am free. Hallelujah. Listen. I wish we had a video. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Please don't just let them go like that. We are not asking them to come out so people will see them. Come. Madam, look at me. Do you know what brought you out here? Look at me. You are married. You are married. Where are your children? Do you know what happened to you? Because I'm seeing every kind of bondage 
the devil wants to take the lives of your children I don't know you I've never seen you you believe God will set you free you are a very nice woman I'm seeing an old garment a garment that looks as if they rubbed it inside Porto Porto and wore it on you but in the name of Jesus Satan take your hands off her now now by the power of the Holy Ghost Janet Janet I'm hearing a name Janet who is Janet please we have we time is not on our side Janet there's no Janet here please come quickly Janet the last three digits of your GSM number is 677 the last three digits of your GSM number 677 please quickly 677 you are Janet where do you live you live in Sabo who is sick in your family you are the one come and stand here my dad and my auntie the last three digits of your phone is what 677 hallelujah my dear let me tell you something God will bring a miracle in your family that will surprise you are you listening to me because your family is discouraged right now they don't even believe that God they, they are just trying and if God does not intervene soon they may be tempted to go into ways that are not of God but there is a God who sits in heaven are you listening to me are you listening to me we're out of time why don't you minister John for five minutes just as the Lord grants you revelation before we continue in the name of Jesus now be free by the power of the Holy Ghost I'm, I'm seeing in the family and in that family there's one member of your family right now as I'm speaking is behind the bar is in the cell I see that some fraudulent things happened that took that member of your family to the cell God says he want to bring deliverance tonight who is that person just lift up your hands I'm seeing your family member I'm seeing one of your family member in the prison cell right now a physical prison cell God says he's going to bring deliverance tonight I see that there are some things that transpired that had to do with fraud father lord we declare in the name of jesus tonight we declare supernatural breakthrough we declare supernatural deliverance for such one let the mercy of god speak over that one and bring him out now in the name of the lord jesus i declare mercy i declare mercy for such one in the name of the lord jesus i'm hearing the lord give me the name naomi and I'm seeing Naomi with an infirmity in her body. I don't know who that Naomi is. I'm seeing an infirmity around Naomi's stomach. If Naomi is here, just lift up Naomi, your hands. Naomi, are you here? Quickly, please, let's save time. If Naomi is here, just lift up That's your hands. Naomi coming, quickly. Please, let's save time. Just, just, just put your hands on your stomach right now in the name of Jesus. That sickness that you have been carrying for a long time, I command you be healed right now in the name of Jesus. I break that yoke of darkness. And I command total wholeness in the name of Jesus. Even that ailment that has to do with toilet and infirmity. I flush it out of your body right now. In the name of Jesus. And you live here supernaturally free. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are healed. In the name of Jesus. For the Lord is tonight bringing breakthroughs for family. Even with respect to business. God specifically speak about business breakthroughs for family. Amen. Business breakthroughs for family. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we prophesy tonight. We prophesy breakthroughs for family business. Amen. We prophesy breakthrough for family Amen. business. We prophesy breakthrough for family business. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Aaron, the Lord says there shall be no death. In the name of the Lord Jesus. For I'm seeing someone in your family. I don't know maybe an auntie or a cousin but someone in your family that is Yoruba by tribe I'm seeing someone in your house right now and I know that you are from Kaduna state for I see a stint of death over that life but the Lord said that you have it tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus 
Who is that person? Because I'm seeing the person right now in your house. It's my auntie. Yeah. I'm seeing her right now in your house. I'm seeing the sting of death over her life. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I break. I break that yoke and I command that deliverance right now. I command that deliverance right now. In the name of Jesus. For the spell is broken and our soul is escaped. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Mommy, put your hands on your body. For I see the Lord doing a work of healing even around your stomach region. Am I saying the truth? I'm seeing something in your stomach right now. An ailment that the Lord is uprooting. And Lord, I declare in the name of Jesus. I command that you be broken. Be broken. In the name of Jesus. I declare total healing tonight. Total healing tonight. Total healing tonight. And for I see certain pains in your life that even has to do with marriage that the Lord is healing tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus. It is done. It is done. Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Josiah, just come and hold my hands. God says there shall be no death. God says there shall be no death. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray over his family and I declare tonight that there shall be no death in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It is done. It is done. In the name of the Lord Jesus. This fair lady, look at me. Are you from the east? Are you from the east? Come. Father Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As I look at you, I saw like a figure, like a masquerade. I see like a masquerade that danced around your family. That's what I see. And the Lord says there are certain stagnation. There are certain limitations that the enemy has brought. Even yoke that has to do with marriage in your family. But the Lord says tonight, he breaks that yoke in the name of Jesus. I command marital breakthrough. Marital breakthrough. In the name of the Lord Jesus. For I'm seeing a family member somewhere around Onicha. I'm seeing your immediate family member somewhere around in Onicha. For they have been struggling. And these ones I'm talking about, they have been struggling. Business is not moving, even marriage. But I break that yoke tonight in the name of Jesus. I declare breakthrough. I declare that the counsel of darkness is broken. In the name of Jesus. It's an to hear. Come, Father, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I like you to turn. Father, thank you in the name of Jesus. For I see a yoke that the enemy brought upon your life. And at a certain point, you had an encounter like, like a demonic spirit in the, in the form of a woman touched your hair and touched something around your hair. And you woke up with a strange experience around your hair. And from that time, certain sickness began to come upon your life. Am I speaking the truth? And it looked as though your hair was not going to grow and you were afraid. But I break that yoke in the name of Jesus. I declare supernatural growth. The sign that the Lord will give to you is that supernaturally, within the span of three months, supernaturally, your hair is going to grow. There's going to be supernatural growth in the name of Jesus. That yoke is broken. No more molestation in the seasons of the night for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are free. You are free. You are free. I declare, I, 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 I see right now, I cannot call some of the names that the Lord is giving me. Where I'm seeing certain ladies that you have been oppressed. You see like people come to sleep with you in the night. I declare right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, let the fire of your deliverance come upon such ones. Let the fire of your deliverance come upon such ones. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we give you praise and we bless you. We give you praise and we bless you. You are free. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the inconsistency with your health, I declare total freedom to you right now. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus the yoke is broken the yoke is broken right now thank you father thank you father thank you Jesus all right well while Jake's ministers if you invited someone who is sick please let them come out now if you brought someone if you are an invitee you came and you brought uh, you are in need of a special I want to minister to those who left if you came with someone please um, just let them come here while Jake's ministers please let's be sensitive we're out of time and we have to be fast Hallelujah. quickly Father, quickly please you. so that we minister just quickly I'll pray for two cases please listen because two cases the Lord reveals to me no just leave the people um, if they are under the anointing just let them just shift them please are, come stand here quickly I think they are people specifically your right leg your right leg it's almost as if it's a paralysis there's an please come those who are those who are in need of a form of a healing you from came your bones. specifically sorry your right leg specifically just lift up your hands wherever you are then the next set of people um there's somebody with it's not migraine you are feeling it is as like a screw right in front of your head here right in front of it who is that person just Quickly lift up your hands. I'll pray with you right now. Quickly lift up your hands. Just lift up your hands. Those cases I call, whether outside, inside, lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Just lift up your hands. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask that healing comes upon you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. That pain you feel in your head. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pull it out right now in the name of Jesus. And the pains in your bones. That form of paralysis coming upon your right leg in the name of Jesus Christ. I release the healing power of God upon it right now. The healing power of God comes upon it right now. Right in the bones. Your nerves will begin to reconstruct right now in the name of Jesus. Because God is touching your... Yeah, somebody, God is touching your knees right now. Your knees. God is touching it and bringing healing. And bringing perfection to your knees. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, blessed Lord. Thank you, blessed Lord. There is a path that no fowl knoweth. The whelps of the lion has not gotten there. Majestic is his presence. Hallelujah. First Thessalonians 2 verse 8. First Thessalonians 2. I'm sorry, not it. Wherefore, we would have come to you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. Wherefore, I would have come to you. It is my desire for you to experience my presence. He said, but Satan hindered us. Wherefore, that blessing would have come to you. Wherefore, that healing, that breakthrough would have come to you. He said, I desire, but Satan hindered us. Tonight is a prayer meeting. We will pray. Wherefore, I would have brought the breakthrough for the family. Wherefore, I would have opened you up to certain realms of grace and power. He said, but Satan 
but Satan hindered us. Wherefore, that genotype would have changed by now. Wherefore, that act of witchcraft and divination over families and territories would have been addressed. He said, but Satan hindered us. Let me tell you something. The kingdom of God is hidden in laws and mysteries. And all through scriptures, you will find the operation of the kingdom hidden in stories, experiences, parables. They are a revelation of the patterns, the workings of the kingdom. It takes illumination. It's called the spirit of revelation. And then your eyes are open to see beyond the story. And then you begin to see the construction, the build up, the character, and the operation of the kingdom. And when you understand it, you have those keys. Then you will command power in this territory. And this is what we seek to transfer. An understanding of the operation of the kingdom. Week after week, this is our project. To unveil unto you the secrets of the kingdom. Because when you find it, then you will be able to operate in mastery. In the last one or two months, we have been unveiling a lot of things. Opening you up to the spiritual dimension of life. All of the teachings have been a build up upon one and another. To open you up to the spiritual dimension. The Bible says they know not. Neither do they understand. They grope in darkness. Confusion. And as a result the earth is out of course. Have I not said ye are gods. And all of you are children of the most high. He said but you shall die like men, men and fall like one of these princes. And the remedy is an unveiling. This is why we value the presence of the Holy Spirit so much. The body of Christ knows a lot. They know a lot of Bible stories. But insight into the truth to understand the operation of the kingdom is what is deficient. says my son pay attention to my words incline your ears to my sayings do not let them depart from out of thy heart keep them in the midst of the heart he said they are life to those who find them health to their flesh it will take your understanding of spiritual things it is understanding that will reduce satan to become nothing in your life Hallelujah. Wherefore we would have come to you. So there are many things that desire to come into your life. Breakthrough. Blessings. Increase. He said, but what happened? Satan hindered us. Satan hindered us. Hindered the blessing. Hindered the lifting. Hindered your insight, access into the deep things of the spirit, but Satan hindered us. Hallelujah. And tonight we have come to call the devil a liar. We have come to open up the two lead gates that you will step into certain things that have a foretime in giving. Please take note of what is happening tonight. There are healings already happening. I'm seeing it in the spirit. Hallelujah. We are going to be praying. This night we will be confronting the gates of darkness. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Tonight we will pursue. We will overtake. And we will recover all. Many people have taught all kinds of junk messages. Look at me. Wickedness is real. Don't let anybody fool you with any sugar-coated message. The Bible says the whole world lieth in wickedness. Hallelujah. Why do you need the power of the Holy Ghost? 
Because there are giants on every mountain. And the Bible says, how awe-inspiring are your ways. It said, through the greatness of thy power, shall thy enemies submit themselves. Psalm 66 verse 3. Wherefore, by now you would have been lifted. By now your family would have risen to a level. You would have stepped into another dimension. But Satan hindered us. Wherefore, you would have been walking in mighty levels of grace by now. Your destiny helpers have desired to come to you. But Satan hindered them. Wherefore, your life partner would have come into your life. You would have been happily married with dignity and honor, but Satan hindered them. Wherefore, that job, that opening, but Satan hindered us. This is Paul the Apostle speaking. I desire to come to you. I know the things I carry and I know that if I meet you, you will never be the same. So Satan hindered us. Wherefore, you would have been coming to, for Koinonia years ago, but Satan hindered you. Wherefore, your loved ones would have been here tonight with all your efforts to bring them, but Satan. I need you to know that Satan is determined to frustrate your Christian experience. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Satan is determined. He will use every spiritual arsenal within his control to see that he frustrates your spiritual life. Therefore, it will take understanding of the operations of the kingdom to triumph over him. He said, unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Oh my God. He said, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed and let not my enemies triumph over me. He's changing everything in obedience to Christ. Tonight, he's restoring everything. In obedience to Christ. Satan has hindered a lot of people. Listen. We have been explaining these things. Right from the teaching. Give me this mountain. That every time you arrive at that mountain. There are giants. Hear me. There are forces of darkness. Stationed across the earth. To ensure. That men do not rise. Zechariah chapter 1. This is a month of breakthrough. Something must happen in your life. I know that somebody believes this word. There are many who will sit down there and keep being cynical and watch others testify. Said they heard the word like we did, but the word did not profit them because it was not mixed with faith. Zechariah 1 from verse 17 down. cry yet saying thus said the lord of hosts my city's true prosperity shall be spread abroad and the lord shall yet comfort zion the moment he it speaks about breakthrough what happens next verse can you give us from amplified is it possible please amplified then i lifted up my eyes and behold four horns Immediately he told the prophet, this is your prophetic destiny. This is what should happen to you. He said, now lift up your eyes and see what has been hindering you. He said, I lifted up my eyes and I beheld four horns. Amplified says, symbols of strength. Next verse. And I said unto the angel who talked with me, what are these? I've not been taught in church that there are horns that can lift people. They have deceived me that you just confess and enter your destiny. This is strange. I have not been taught. What are these? Many of you have been deceived 
that all it takes is just to laugh and you just jump in and enter your destiny. All it takes is to just pack five naira and put an envelope and come and drop it. Or that they pour a little dot of oil. Let me tell you the truth. There is more to the operation of the kingdom than this. He said, what are these? It is strange. I have not been taught. I wasn't given this insight that after a promise there is a contention in the spirit to bring its deliverance. Most people just stop in verse 17. He said, now that I've told you your prophetic destiny, lift your eyes, let's tackle the resistance. What is this that you see? If it's raining, let them come in. Please come in. Sit anywhere. On the ground, on the altar, anywhere. Just find a place and sit down. Tonight is a serious meeting and we're going to pray. Listen. And he answered me. He said, these are what? The four horns of powers which have scattered Judas. Rob men of their praise. Rob men of their testimony. Judah means praise. Praise is an effect of a testimony. The well-doing of the Lord. Please come in. Come in everybody. Sit down anywhere. Come and sit here. Wherever you can find, just sit down. There are spaces all around. Ushers, please help them. I need everybody's attention. Are you following me now? He said they have scattered what? Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Tonight we will pray. Oh, that devil that is holding your destiny. See, no matter how mad a man is, he does not enter fire by mistake. Is that true? No matter how mad he is, he can do stupid things and they say he's a madman. But when he sees fire, the Bible says he maketh his angel spirits and his ministers flames. Look up. Every promise in the Bible requires contentions in the spirit for you to actualize it. He said, this charge I give unto you, my son Timothy, that you wore a good warfare with the prophecy that has been released to you. There are more seats. Stand anywhere. No devil will stop you this night. So let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your home. Sing it one more time. Yeah. Let hope, let it rise. Hallelujah. Verse 20. Please follow me tonight. It says, Then the Lord showed me what? Four smiths or workmen. One for each enemy of the horn. He showed me four carpenters. He said, now I've shown you the horn. There are certain people I am going to send to you. He calls them carpenters. This is your promise. This is your destiny. Between you and your destiny, there are four horns. And the job of those horns is to scatter your life, scatter your finances, scatter your anointing, scatter your prayer life. He said, but I sent four carpenters. One for each horn. He said to beat it down. 21. Then said I, what are these horns or smith? So Satan sends his horn. See, let me tell you something. Go to verse 19. He said, these are four horns and four powers. Their job is to wreck your destiny. Are you listening to me? They are, they are patient. These are spirit entities scattered around the face of the earth. And every time they see anything that looks like growth and progress in your family, they are the ones, they watch to see when your sister gets pregnant. Their job is to scatter. He said to scatter Judah. Judah is the place of praise. Israel is the place of promise. 21. 
Then said I, what are these horns coming to do? He says, and he said, these are the horns or powers that scattered Judah so that what? No man will lift his head. There are forces. Hear me, Koinonia. There are forces of darkness positioned by the powers of darkness. He said, wherefore, I desire to come to you, but Satan hindered us. So that no man will lift up his head. They are scattered around our villages. They are scattered around ministries. So that certain ministries cannot lift up their heads. So that certain destinies cannot lift up their heads. That's the job. Every time anyone in your family is about to rise, they contend in your academics, in your finance. The moment you begin to pray, after one week your prayer life dies the horns the moment you have faith and say lord i trust you after three days something pushes you down are you following me now you enter a relationship two weeks something just happens and scatters everything who are these he said these are four horns they have been stationed and every time they see you lifting your head their job is to bring you down it's in your bible it says so that no man will lift up his head many ministries do not know the powers of darkness that try to tie them down are you listening to me the moment a ministry starts blossoming the men of god are carried away with money and prosperity and increase administrations they forget that there are four horns let the lord just declare a prophecy over your life and you will see these horns rise the moment they declared this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased all hell broke loose he said i desire to give you prosperity i desire to give you increase but there are four horns there are four horns there are many families represented here what you are seeing in your dreams and visions and what is happening in your life is different between that dream and the manifestation are four horns they are gates are you following me tonight I came to preach my heart because we are going to pray. Four horns. You go, you go and apply for a job. They are ready to respond to you. Three days later, something comes up without any explanation. See, hear me believers. If you don't take charge of your destiny and apply the keys of the kingdom, you may remain forever. And you will not lift up your head. Thank you for lifting. 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 My head. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. My head. There are many ministers who struggle and struggle. They preach, they suffer, they go and do a lot of publicity. People come and get healed and go. They don't, these are four horns. The moment they pay your father's salary, everybody in the family starts becoming mysteriously sick without explanation until that one night I finish. You marry a man who was loving and caring, suddenly he becomes a Dracula. Four horns. Tonight, we have come under an apostolic and prophetic atmosphere to confront the gates of darkness. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Let me tell you, Satan can bow. Are you hearing me? Satan can bow. You must get angry in your spirit. Don't just sit and watching others. Forget about what is happening and concentrate. There's no space. Sit around. Find somewhere and sit. Tonight, when it's time to pray, I don't want to see you looking at me. 
pack your wig, pack your wivon, keep it one side. We are going to pray this night. Hallelujah. He said, but this smith or workmen have come to what? There are men that have been anointed to terrorize this horn. Are you saying that word? He said, see, he said, but this smith, these carpenters have come to terrorize the horn. He didn't say, it's not just to defeat them, to terrorize them. There are people Satan is afraid of. See, Pastor Jakes made a statement. Look at me. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. There is this error in the body. There are two errors. One is the error of saying, see, everybody, I have the same access to God. Are you hearing me? I have the same access to God. There is nothing there. No man of God is special and this. Or the one that men of God make themselves semi-gods. Both are wrong. But let me tell you something clearly this night. Not every human being is a human being. The anointing has changed some people. The Bible says there are many bodies. Some are terrestrial. Some are celestial. They may look like you. The ability to recognize that difference is what will take you out of certain things. Are you hearing me? We are equal in Christ. But we are not equal in call and office and anointing. You must realize this. The Bible says there are some people that have been anointed to terrorize them and cause them to be panic stricken. Look at the horns that are terrorizing others. But the Bible says God calls some people and say, you, I just call you, come and become a terrorist. It's an election of grace. It's in your Bible. This is not error. It's not because they pray more. It is an office. an office to terrorize the works of darkness see let me tell you this night whatever power hear me i'm speaking under the unction of the lord whatever power that is responsible for holding any area of your life except god is not the god of heaven it must give up on you this night i said it must give up on you this night i don't care I speak under a prophetic and apostolic unction as one of these privileged carpenters. If I be sent of God, I speak to you. Every horn that is responsible for terrorizing your life, it will bow this night. He said, but I have sent carpenters. They are around, scattered over the earth. The only problem is that we have not trained our spirits to recognize them. Jesus went to certain cities, they saw him until he ascended to heaven. And they said, is this the man that has been among us? See, let me tell you, one of the greatest revelations you have in this life is that some people have been called. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's called an election of grace. I didn't call myself. See, let me tell you something. When the Lord showed me the vision for ministry, hear me. I was standing in a tower and I saw an endless sea of people very oppressed people messed up by satan it was a whole generation of people and i saw them crying and while they came close i was hearing the sounds of their cry and they were blaming me in the vision and i said what is wrong and they said there is no food and no water suddenly it occurred to me that i was holding in my hands the keys to the storehouse that will feed that generation this is a vision i had listen to me please hallelujah and when that happened i told them who is the cause who is the reason why you are the way you are and they said you are the one suddenly
compassion fell on me and I said, I'm going to come out right now. I, I got to that tower. I was trying to hide from somebody. That was when I looked through the mirror and I saw that thing. It was fear and timidity that made me to run like Gideon to go and hide in the vision. But the people were telling me that we are dying here and you are the one who is holding the keys to the storehouse. They said no food and no water. These two things. Hallelujah. And I was determined that I was going to go out. The moment I opened the door, because I was afraid that I was alone. When I opened the door, there was a giant person that stood. And he said, hold my hands. We will go together. He's called the Holy Spirit. This is the whole idea behind the things we do with the Holy Spirit. People have criticized that we are emphasizing the... See, let me tell you. Every great vision comes under fire and criticism because people do not understand. The Bible says they know not. I'm taking time to explain to you. This call, there are people who have been called as carpenters. You may die in a place without recognizing because you see everybody and you think they are celestial or they are terrestrial. There are some people that certain graces have elected them. Hallelujah. In one other vision, I was in a whole city and I found out that all the hospitals and the clinics were closed. And I was crying because there were people that were sick. I said, what is all this? What is going on here? And I had a voice. He said, go and heal them. That was the end. So when people hear that HIV positive is changing to negative, or when people hear that genotypes are changing, rather than finding out, they keep criticizing and castigating. We don't announce any miracle here without verification. He said, but these smiths or these workmen have been sent to terrorize these homes. That's why their lives are not normal. They are not normal human beings. They don't live like normal human beings. Hallelujah. Many of you do not know the burden of carrying a prophetic agenda for a generation. It will change you. I don't have a social life. I have lost many things that many people have. You do not know what it means to come under the influence of a divine mandate. I see a lot of people jumping and smiling. I'm apostle, I'm prophet. I want to open ministry and I say, oh dear. Day and night you are under fire of all sorts. But he that endures to the end. Hallelujah. He said to cast out the horns or powers of the nations who have lifted their horn against the land of Judah to scatter it. There are horns, brothers and sisters, that are responsible for the way your father behaves, for the way your mother behaves, for the way your loved ones behave. You have tried counseling. You have tried psychology. It didn't work. They are called horns. But the Bible says, my head has thou exalted like the horn of a unicorn and you have anointed me with fresh oil. Hallelujah. Let's look at one more scripture. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 9. Corinthians 6 verse 9. Are you there? What did I say? 16, I'm sorry. 16, verse 9. Let's read together. It's projected. One to read. One to read it again. For a great door and effectual is opened up to me. And there are many. A great door is opened. The door of marriage has been opened. The door of healing has been opened. He said, but there are how many? many? 
But the Bible says, I have set before you an open door. It said no man can shut it. And there are carpenters that have been sent to enforce that thing. Do you know what? Let me tell you something. We are not the only carpenters. You are here because you are one of those carpenters too. This is our mission. Our mission is not to become great men of God, but to make you a terrorist in the kingdom of darkness. See, it is not everyone, hear me, that is afraid of Satan. Are you hearing me? It's not everyone that is afraid of death. It's not everyone that is afraid of sickness. Some people have seen how cheap Satan is and he's aware. Hallelujah. That knowledge comes through an understanding of the operation of the principles of the kingdom. Hallelujah. There are many people who do not know. Listen, I want to tell you something. If you do not know the laws that govern the kingdom, it can be costly. Are you hearing me? Longevity is not a mistake. Longevity is not a product of going to church. There are kingdom principles that bring forth longevity. Divine health is not a mistake. Divine health is not a product of the anointing. Divine health is from the body of Jesus. Are you hearing me? Anointing comes to get away the demon spirits that are responsible for bringing that. He said by his stripes. He didn't say by the oil. We have misapplied a lot of spiritual laws. Authority against witches and wizards is not the issue of uh -uh. there are kingdom principles and this is what we seek to share. Greatness does not happen by magic. Many of you are asking, why is the devil disturbing me? Are you still asking that question? When Satan followed Jesus to the wilderness, was patient for one month and ten days until Jesus finished fasting. What makes you think that the devil will just look at you and say, oh, I understand you are anointed. But it takes the power of the Holy Spirit to look at the devil eyeball to eyeball and say I am one of those carpenters <laughs> hallelujah there are some of you who don't sleep when you close your eyes you are oppressed I was one of those people the bible says a man of honor who does not know will die like a beast in the field tonight we have come to call the devil a liar I've come to speak to you that there is an authority. There are seven things that redemption brings unto men. All of them must be at work in your life. The Bible says, worthy is the lamb to receive blessings, riches, honor. These are all the things he has received and he has given you. Seven. And it must be at work in your life. Hallelujah. Who are these horns? Who are these horns that have stood against little children? Who are these horns? You are aware of the testimony of the man who came here and who was healed, I think during one of the services or thereabout. He was sleeping in the night. Somebody appeared to him in a dream. Remember the story? With big syringe, injected this man with HIV virus and he woke up physically with the virus. That devil is a liar on now years ago I used to pray for barren people and they were not healed they didn't give birth it disturbed me and I went back I said Lord what, what is it then the Lord told me barrenness is not sickness it's an oppression it doesn't require healing there is a spirit the spirits come and they create what we call fibroid fibroid is the baby of these spirits in the womb of people. That's why women have miscarriages in the night. Why don't they have miscarriages in the daytime? But you are carpenters. See, 
I look forward to testimonies. Where will he, somebody will say, Ah, I healed the sick and I raised the dead. Not Pastor Jakes did this. Uh uh-uh. uh. You be the carpenters. You are not falling down for nothing. You are not falling down to prove we are anointed. God is in a serious business of working on you. Say, I'm one of the carpenters. Say it, I'm one of the carpenters. Yes, financial carpenters. Apostolic carpenters. One of my life's goal is to break the back of poverty in the church. Is one of it. I hate the effect of poverty on many families. More ladies have entered prostitution. They didn't come to meet you. How much do you have? Many people have been messed up. There are some of you now. You want to marry. But you cannot get married. Because of the finance. And some of you are hoping that one day. I will get a job of 10,000 and then I will get married. Calculate it by your do you to judge. But when those that God has sent to bless you, they can come in one day. He said, Your gates shall be continually open to receive the forces of the Gentiles. Do you believe this? You are going to get angry this night. This night, we are going to pray. I'm just sharing with you scriptures. The Bible says Daniel in chapter 10. Remember how that Daniel was praying and fasting. Wanting to get an understanding. And the Bible says the moment is there from the very first day. Daniel 10. You start reading from verse 5 down to 11 verse 1. When he was coming, the Bible says the prince of Persia withstood the angel 20 and one day. The prince of Persia withstood him. Hallelujah. The prince of Persia withstood him. Until he kept praying. The moment that embargo was lifted, The angel said, now I am come to give thee understanding. One of the chief princes came to hell. Tonight there is divine backing of the angelic. As we pray, there will be things happening in the realm of the spirit. Yokes of darkness that will be broken. This is pre-miracle service. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, to break every chain. To break every chain. That's what God will do tonight. To break every chain. To break every chain. To break every chain. Sing it one more time. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. I've shared it here. Before we start Koinonia, listen, I realize that there is a secret to increase and growth. And I knew that there were powers over territory that kept ministries down. I've shared this again. From the roundabout of Chicken Republic, I started walking there till aviation, commanding the forces to bow. 
commanding principalities and power. And then the city opens up. Before I go for a ministration in any city, I speak to the principalities. They know my voice. See, let me teach you something. There are principalities. There are powers. There are rulers. There are spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. These are different strata of, of darkness. But the Bible says you have been exalted above thrones, dominions, and every name that is named. Both in this realm, this world, and in the world to come. So you command them to bow. Hallelujah. As our prayer department begins to pray, they speak over the week and an open heavens and you are there in your house you don't even know what carries you from your house you are still complaining and insulting us yet you are coming because the heavens are open there's an army rising up you are that prophetic army there's an army rising up I tell you you are that army there's an army rising up to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Tonight, every one of you is going to represent not just yourself, but even your families. Hear me? Your families have been praying for a savior. Say, we can't die like this. And God said, come for koinonia. You, you, let God find a carpenter. Hallelujah. I just came, today I just came, I've been at home. I needed to go and visit the house. As soon as I stepped in, in the night, that night as I slept, in a dream, the Lord showed me everything that was wrong. And I got up the next day while they were sleeping. Hallelujah. I got anointing oil, poured it inside water, and carried the bucket. I took my bare foot and I was walking around. And I was commanding the forces in that territory to bow. I said, An ambassador is in town. This is what we are teaching you. Hallelujah. An ambassador is in town. I went and looked at my mother's poultry. I said, I command increase. See, if you know the office that you stand in in Christ, you will not take it for granted. The Bible says, as I hear you say before my ears, so will I do. Realize you are not ordinary. You are not the one looking for help. And if there is any need for help, we will grant you the help here by the grace of God and empower you to go back. When you see things that are not working, rejoice because you are here. You carry the backing of heaven. Your job is to legislate. Your job is to legislate. The Bible says he confirmed the words of his messengers. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Ambassador, you must realize this so that you don't just stand at home or in your offices. Everything that is going wrong, start blaming yourself and say, Now everybody's lamenting. If there is nobody, I am an ambassador. Say it, I'm an ambassador. I'm an ambassador. This is why God is bringing you, and you are going to pray as you pray first for yourself. And then through the fire of the Holy Ghost, you will dislodge powers over your life. And then you will see testimonies rolling in. Suddenly you will find out that certain insights you have been struggling to get. Suddenly there is an open heaven. Your ministry or your fellowship takes another level as if Satan does not exist. Hallelujah. Nobody ever came to Jesus Christ. Hear me. After he went 40 days and 40 nights, Satan came to withstand him because Jesus wanted to come to the people like Paul, but Satan withstood him. When he defeated Satan, suddenly on the mountain, people started coming. Along the waterside, people said, what happened? 
powers were dislodged this night hear me you are not praying for healing you are confronting the gates of darkness rise up on your feet everybody rise up on your feet listen 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 i want you to know that heaven is backing you tonight are you hearing what i'm saying say heaven is backing me say it heaven is backing me because we are going to pray now and by the power of the holy spirit i tell you there will be an eruption of testimonies after this night's meeting you will know that the things that have been happening around your life and your family they are not as ordinary as they look you are the holy ghost holy ghost holy ghost you are the holy ghost take your place number one hallelujah you are going to pray and say in the name of Jesus I confront gates that are stopping the finances the finances grace that are making your family members not to be titers grace that are making them not to be givers lift your voice Financial days. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please hold on. This prayer must be serious this night. Please let's have two of our school of ministry students, two prayer band. Benga, come. Kenny, come. Go on one of the mic. Our school of ministry students, where are you? Are you not? Tolu, come. Quickly, two, three. Well, you, it's okay. You push, go and share the mic. Stand behind. When I say pray, if you are not praying, you will go back to your seat. You are not out for jamboree. We are going to pray. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You are going to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Four horns. There are four prayer points we have. The Bible says they were sent to one. This finance thing, you are going to pray it. Lift your voice and pray.
that will enter into a man's life and, and spoil the good except he first find the strong man. He said, and I will give you the keys of it. Hallelujah. Hear me. Many of us will be surprised what will happen this night. Prayer point number two. You are going to declare and say, Satan, the Bible says through the greatness of thy power, right now, I command those forces bow. Lift your voice and pray. Bow. Bow. Principalities bow.
says when you catch a thief listen please when a thief steals your property and you catch that thief he won't bring back what is stole he said he will restore sevenfold this is what the bible says sevenfold you're going to pray see listen the lord is showing me in i'm in a vision right now and the lord is showing me angels holding baskets hear me but the baskets are empty. Listen. Say good. Please follow me. <laughs> there is a prophetic atmosphere here. There are empty baskets. And I'm wondering, and the Lord is ministering to me. He's saying this basket will be full of the blessings that are due God's people. See? Si hear me? Si he said, and I will restore. Si hear me? Canker worms can si eat years of si people's life. So you are growing older. But nothing is happening. But this night, hey! I don't know about you, but I came to Koinonia. I'm placing a demand. Everything hey! you know, Satan took. I'd like you to call it back and say, Restore.
listen. Rest on. The Holy Ghost just ministered something Rest to me. On. We are still praying on the third point. Rest the Lord said, Rest we on. should call back opportunities Rest on. that were either missed or wasted. Rest are you hearing me? There are some of you, some circles came into your life. Rest on. Either by carelessness it passed. Let me tell you, Rest it's on. only in this realm that you count time. In the realm of the spirit, you can call time back. Hear me? I don't care what opportunity you missed. Rest on. Whether it was an opportunity for marriage, Rest on. for job, Rest right on. now. I want you to call back Rest that on. opportunity. It will come back. Yes. Satan is until you engage in prayer. Satan will keep opening his eyes until you pray. When you pray, the devil will shrink and you see how powerless he is. Hallelujah. Now, one last prayer point. We'll add one more. You are going to confront the gates over your family. See, don't let anybody fool you that there are no gates. Let me tell you something. Some of you are the last card that God has to use over your family. If you don't do anything about it, don't think God brought you here just to waste your time. Listen. See me. Listen, listen. If you truly love your family members, effectual prayer is not just by shouting. It is the seriousness. Put your heart in this prayer. Many of you, as you pray, you will begin to see vision. See, hear me. Listen, let me tell you something. Listen, listen. Uh, see, we don't kill people in this place. But let me tell you, God is a God of mercy, but he's a God of judgment. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are certain horns. We don't care who these horns are. Unfortunately, sometimes... As this power is taking some human beings become victims. We don't kill people. But whatever it will take for the glory of your family to rise, you will pray this night. Lift your voice. Oh, my God. 
I will not let you go. And the Bible says, when he touched his thigh, he said, What is your name? He said, Jacob, which means a cheat and a supplanter. He said, You are called Israel. For as a prince, you have sought with God and prevailed. And the Bible says, Hear me. He says, And the sun rose, and he called that place Peniel. Hallelujah. I've told you as much, hear me. I've told you as much as possible. Please invite your loved ones for the miracle service. You don't hear me talk like this. We are only responding to the things that the Holy Spirit, if they refuse, no problem. For God will do a work in this place. Hallelujah. We'll take one more prayer point. Hallelujah. We are going to pray for this ministry. Hear me. I'm like a pregnant woman right now. Because I know when we step into seasons. God has his way. In the last three to four months. That's why you find out that you don't find me outside. I have been praying and preparing birthing new and mighty things in the spirit. We are stepping into a dimension. See, for when you are faithful with what God gives you, he said he measured a thousand cubits and it was to the ankle. And when he saw that you were faithful, he measured a thousand cubits. Many of you are already sensing that there are newer levels of grace. You can see that the unction upon the house is not what it used to be. Yes. This is ushering season. Oh, For when God wants to bless you, He will first increase the anointing, then enlarge your sphere of influence. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the praise. You have taken all the dominion. You have taken all the praise. You have made. Hallelujah. you love this ministry I'd like you in the next few minutes to pray your life out listen you're going to pray for the ministers see the way ministers are falling around like leaves immorality all kinds of things I've said it any man can fall from any height are you hearing what I'm saying and if you love us pray for us pray for us we are going to pray for this ministry we are going to say Lord let a dimension of grace hear me hear the prayer point and fire spread from this place and around this nation God is already doing great things through our teachings I cannot describe to you what is happening around the media can tell you best the mighty and terrible things that God is doing 
Some of you have gone back and you have become mighty agents of change. Even you, you are surprised at yourself. This is what we are training you to become. And hear me, when you are praying for the ministry, you are praying for yourself. The ministry is not Joshua Selman. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You're going to say, Lord, together, as a family, nobody will rise and leave another. Are you hearing me? There will not be a few men of God rising, growing in grace. Hear me? There are certain things God has given us as a ministry. Number one is the presence of God. Number two is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The love of God. God has given us influence. God has given us prosperity. We are going to pray that the strongholds that attempt to raise their heads, listen, there will never come a time where we will not have testimonies here. The vision must speak. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You are going to command and say every force that will want to stop the vision from speaking, it will speak in your own life. It will speak. If truly God has called us, something should come upon your life that you will become a peasant of the vision. Lift your voice and pray for ear. <laughs> for all the arms of the ministry our school of ministry God is raising mighty mighty men of power in all spheres not just ministry you are going to pray for our students you are going to pray for the missions hallelujah you are going to pray for koinonia you are going to pray for all of the things that we are doing you are going to say Lord not one sick body will come and not be healed not one oppressed person you're going to pray for grace to stand criticism grace to stand persecution grace to remain faithful grace to remain grateful grace to remain humble Let's go, 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 let's go
Hallelujah. I want to do something prophetic this night. Hallelujah. One of the things God has given us is the spirit of dominion. You know what dominion is? Dominion means to legislate the counsel of God in any sphere, in Satan notwithstanding. And among the many things that will happen to you tonight, I'm going to pray for you. That everything we stand for, your life must represent it. See, if you do not represent what we stand for, we are fake. It means we are lying. It means we are faking power somewhere. If we are healing the sick, you should heal the sick. You must not be in ministry. If we are humble and you are arrogant, there is something wrong with the transference of spirits. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. I want you to believe, my brothers. Believe. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Please be careful with the fans. Father, you didn't send us to waste people's time. You didn't send us to be noisemakers. My God, I am praying this night. Every power, every force against any area of your life, this night, if I be sent as a servant of God, if God has ordained us as one of these carpenters, I pray right now, those powers bow. 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 Every power hindering your marriage in this place, hear me, or the marriage of your loved ones, this night, I release you in the name of Jesus. Everything stopping your breakthrough. Breakthrough. As surely as the God of heaven lives. Between this night and next Friday, I command unbelievable breakthrough. Receive it. Receive it. I invoke it from the heavens with the backing of Elohim. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen. Every close heaven in this place, whether it's as a result of non tithing or mistakes or whatever, I don't care what is responsible. Every heaven that is closed in this place, right now, this night, I pray, let the heavens be open over you. The heavens be open over you. Let the heavens be open over you. Hallelujah. This month, there are three things I'm speaking into your life now. Listen, number one is authentic unction. Listen, number two is favor that you cannot imagine listen number three is honor 
receive this threefold Amen. blessing. Receive it. Amen. Receive power. Power to heal the sick. Amen. Power to cast out devils. Amen. Hear me. In the name that is above all names. Whatever bows to us here. Let it bow to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Whatever answers to us. Let it answer to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to pray for your family. Hear me, enough is enough this night. Lift your hands. Super. Super. Your families will never believe you or the God you serve until there is an evidence. I pray, my God, that evidence of breakthrough that will compel families to know that you are at work. Let there be a release now. Let there be a release now. Let the angel of the Lord go across every state, every city. I instruct it. Every city. Saria, Abuja, Lagos, Calabar, Kogiste, Jos, angels, in the name of Jesus, go and confirm breakthroughs. Go and confirm breakthroughs. Go and confirm breakthroughs. Give testimonies. 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 So that they will know that your God is alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is instructing me to do something dangerous. Please take off your shoes and stand on your feet. This is not diabolic, please. Don't go and start criticizing us and talking nonsense. Listen, something will come upon your life this night. Please listen. Listen. I don't do stupid things just because people are doing I don't have money. The Bible says, hear me. It says, anywhere the sole of your feet treads upon, it has been given to you. I want to pray, hear me. Many of you do not know the mystery of what is happening, but I want you to believe. You will be amazed. Because I see an angel of the Lord, pure red from head to toe. Never seen, listen, I've never seen this angel of the Lord. And this is what he was telling me. That there is an impartation and a transference. Hear me. The influence we enjoy as a ministry is not a mistake. Are you hearing me? God has honored us and taken us to where we cannot merit. I want it to come upon your life this night. Lift your hands. Many of you will receive mighty impartations. Hear me. You will see things answering. See, your Christianity will have results. Father, I stand as your servant tonight. Under the instruction that you have given me. My God, there is a spirit upon this ministry. An operation of the Holy Ghost. The operation of dominion. An inexplainable influence. At the count of three. My God, let every feet upon this ground receive that anointing and demonstrate it practically. Thank you, Father. One, two, three. Receive it. Take 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 it. Receive it. The spirit of dominion. The action of kingdom influence. Let the crowd open up for you. Let the crowd open up for you. Let the earth answer to you. 
has given us inexplainable kingdom wealth and prosperity please lift your hands you need it i honestly want to pray from my heart that your financial heavens will be open in a way and i'm going to pray my god and my king i pray in the name that is above all names you have called and you have sent me lord if i be your servant at the count of three let an unction of inexplainable wealth let it come upon your people at the count of three one two three take it take it take it take it Finance to do mighty things for the kingdom to feed the hungry, to clothe the poor, to wipe the tears from your family. Let this anointing bring you ideas, let it bring you opportunities. a mighty open heavens mighty mighty open heavens Jesus we give you thanks Jesus we give you thanks you have not called the seed of Jacob to seek you again give him thanks I assure you as surely as the Lord lives your testimonies begin right now. Anyone under the sound of my voice who is sick in your body, whether blood disease, fibroid, lump in your breast, in the name that is above all names, we change genotypes now. SS be changed to AA now. AS be changed to AA now. Migraine headaches go in the name of Jesus. Demonic manifestations go now in the name of Jesus. Lump in the breast disappear now. Appendicitis go now. Every kind of infirmity. If it has a name, I command it to bow now. You will return with testimonies. HIV be healed now. Every dead virus, every virus that brings death in your body, I curse it, it dies now. Hepatitis, A, B, and C, go forever now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
Hear me. I want to give some people an opportunity right now to make a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. The number one vision that we have, please keep standing. Don't sit down yet. Please, please. I know you've tried. We need to make this great call. The Bible says, And they that be wise shall shine like the firmaments of the heavens, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars even forevermore. I want to give you an opportunity right now. There are many of you, some of you are coming for the first time, some of you have been coming, but you have never made a genuine decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, it all starts with a decision to come back home. We do not condemn you. It doesn't matter what you have done. Some of you have given your heart to the Lord, but you have found yourself derailing in a path that is not of God. Right now, it's our joy to welcome you home and for you to start an authentic Christian journey that will produce results. God desires to make you an ambassador. Some of you, your coming out is going to begin to be the beginning of salvation in your family. Right now, while everybody is standing, I want you to leave your seat and begin to come right now. Those who need to rededicate their hearts and those who are giving their lives. Don't wait for anybody to come. You are the first to come. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Come and stand. God bless you. Young, old, come and stand. Don't be emotional about it. This is a very serious decision. God bless you. Come from everywhere. Outside, inside. Please, don't let the devil take advantage of your life. Don't let the devil take advantage of your life. God is giving you an opportunity to make a lasting decision. Leave your seat. Don't allow your friend or your family member come and stop you. Thank you, Jesus. If you are still coming, keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Don't let the devil tell you it's too late. Keep coming. Keep coming. Tonight is the night for an authentic decision. Tonight is the night for an authentic decision. Don't be afraid of anybody. Don't be ashamed of anybody. Hallelujah. The Bible says, as many who come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Some of you are making the decision for the Lord Jesus Christ for the first time. Some of you are born again. You love God. But you found yourself derailing and you want to mean business with God tonight. It doesn't matter which of the groups. I want to welcome you. We're a family here. We love you. We believe in your future and what God has to do in your life. Hallelujah. God brought you here because he wants to give you a new beginning. Lift your right hand and say this prayer after me from the depths of your heart. It's not a special number. Mean it from your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. And I come before you tonight, unable to help myself. I have heard your word, and this night, I make Jesus Lord of my life. Forgive me my sins. I receive remission of sins. I receive eternal life into my spirit. From today, I'm saved. I'm a child of God. Holy Spirit, come and fill me. Build me. Make me an ambassador for the kingdom. Empower me to live the victorious Christian life. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I salute you for making this great decision. This is the greatest miracle that has happened in this place. Now you'll be having a word with Pastor Jakes. He's going to be meeting with you personally. He'll be following you up. Please and please, as much as possible, I want you to be part of... I want you to be part of this and make sure that you show up Wednesday by 4. Please, tomorrow by 4, you have a meeting with Pastor Jakes. The venue is at the Chapel of Redemption, just the book stand closed. Please, those of you who invited them, remind them and let them come. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Lord increase you. The Lord bless you. Please follow the ushers. They will have your details. God bless you. Appreciate them. Just follow the ushers. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. In a few minutes, we'll be out of here. This is your first time of worshiping with us in Koinonia. We love you. We appreciate you. We celebrate you. 
We want to honor you. Please, I'd like you to leave your seat and come out gloriously and honorably. We want to pray for you. God bless you. Please leave your seat wherever you are, inside or outside. If there's a new person who is sitting, push the person and tell him, I love you too much. I love you too much. Hallelujah. Keep clapping, Koinonia. This is not your best. Thank you. The Lord brought them. For those of you who have made it a point of duty to invite people to get blessed, may the Lord invite your destiny helpers into your life again and again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. I appreciate all of you. We celebrate you. The Lord honor and increase you. Hallelujah. This is Koinonia, a meeting put together by Eternity Network International. I believe you are blessed tonight. You will go back with unending testimonies. You will be amazed. Hallelujah. I pray that the Lord will bless you. We want to pray and prophesy into your life. We are anointed people. And whatever we call you, you become. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Saints of God, stretch your hands and speak those words. You are anointed. Every word you speak. The Bible says, whatsoever name Adam called them, that was the name they were. Go ahead and prophesy. Declare. We call you blessed. We bless you with a hunger for the spirit. We bless you with a hunger for prayer and the word of God. We pray that the Lord will equip you and make you a giant in the spirit. Every habit, everything that does not represent Christ in your life leaves you right now. You return as a sign and a wonder. Things will begin to fall in their place in your life. You will become a testimony even to yourself. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Hallelujah. Thank you once again. We love you. We honor you. Please just follow the ushers. They will greet you more warmly on our behalf. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salman. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.